Hey there, welcome to Act on Mental Health, where we're learning about acceptance and commitment therapy and how to live life more purposefully and mindfully using Act. Now, before we begin, let's do a little bit of a check-in. How's your year going? If you're like me, your year started with clear goals and good intentions and a lot of ambition. If you've set a goal, you've automatically assigned yourself obstacles. Some loom large, others barely visible. Yet there's no worthy goal that's easy and obstacle free. And somewhere down the line, you might get stuck. Perhaps you're stuck now and you're facing some obstacle. Fear is the biggest obstacle of all. And I'm not just talking about the feeling of fear. Russ Harris breaks down fear in his book, The Happiness Trap, into four distinct obstacles of fear. First is fusion with unhelpful thoughts. I can't do this anymore. This is just too painful. I always fail anyways. No one cares if I do this. Second is expectations that are unrealistic. Too short of time frames for results. You know, the progress isn't fast enough. The need to be perfect, to make no mistakes. This isn't good enough, must be better. Third is avoidance of uncomfortable feelings. So people, places, or things that we simply can't have. Fourth, remoteness from your values. Goals seem pointless, meaningless, or insignificant. You can't remember why you even started in the first place. So that's fear, fusion, expectations, avoidance, and remoteness. And of these four obstacles, fusion is probably the most common. What's fusion? And what does it have to do with willingness? Let's consider a metaphor by Russ Harris called demons on the boat. Imagine you're steering a ship far out at sea. Below the deck, out of sight, lies a vast horde of demons, all with enormous claws and razor sharp teeth. These demons have many different forms. Some of them are emotions, such as guilt, anger, fear, or hopelessness. Some are memories of times you've failed, screwed up, or been hurt. Others are thoughts like, it's too hard, I'll make a fool of myself, or I'll fail. Some of them are mental images in which you see yourself performing badly or getting rejected. Others are strong urges to drink more, smoke, harm yourself or overeat. And still others are unpleasant sensations such as tightness in your chest or not in your stomach. Now, as long as you keep that ship drifting out at sea, the demons will stay below. But as soon as you start steering toward land, they clamor up from below deck, flapping their membranous wings, baring their fangs, and generally threatening to tear you into little pieces. Not surprisingly, you don't like that very much. So you cut a deal. If you demons stay out of sight, down below, I'll keep the ship drifting out at sea. The demons agree and everything seems okay for a while. The interesting thing is, although these demons threaten you, they never actually cause you any physical harm. Why not? Because they can't. All they can do is growl and wave their claws and look terrifying. Physically, they can't even touch you. And once you realize this, you're free. It means you can take your ship wherever you want as long as you're willing to accept the demon's presence. All you have to do to reach land is accept that the demons are above deck. But if you're not willing to accept these demons, if you've got to keep them below deck at all costs, then your only option is to stay adrift at sea. If we take these demons seriously and give them our full attention, our boat is doomed to drifting out at sea. So when they appear, it's helpful to remember this quote by Henry James. Until you try, you don't know what you can't do. Suppose you're climbing a mountain that has a spectacular view at the top. You're halfway up when you come to a really steep slope where the path is narrow and rocky. Right about now, it starts pouring with rain. Now you're cold and wet. You're struggling up this steep, slippery track and your legs are getting tired and you're gasping for air. And you start thinking, why didn't anyone tell me it was gonna be this tough? At this point, you have a choice. You can turn back or keep going. If you keep going, it's not because you wanna get colder or wetter or more exhausted. 
because you want the satisfaction of reaching the summit and experiencing those magnificent vistas. You're willing to endure the discomfort, not because you want it or enjoy it, but because it gets between you and where you're going. In 2023, I wanted to start a YouTube channel to share about the things that I've learned with ACT, about mental health, and how to improve people's lives in a meaningful way. This goal was more of an intention to do that someday at some time. It wasn't very specific. In the summer, I got inspired by a random video on YouTube from Daryl Eves on how to start a YouTube channel. It hadn't occurred to me that I could create a library of video content that I could build over time to share with clients and others on YouTube. After watching his video and a dozen more over the next couple of weeks and reading his book, YouTube Formula, I was ready to act. Well, sort of. I was ready to go and develop ideas on paper. So I created seven video outlines to start my channel. But fear began to set in the closer I got to hitting the record button. You see, I became fused with thoughts like, no one's going to watch this. People won't like me. What if I say something wrong or embarrassing? What will my friends and family think of me? And where will I find time for this? Really, I was unwilling for weeks to hit the record button because I didn't want whatever happened to overwhelm me with rejection, feeling incompetent, or experiencing humiliation. Finally, I forced myself to sit in my living room and read my script while recording. I edited the video and spent way too much time editing every detail. Being frustrated by the sound quality issues that I couldn't fix and obsessing over how I presented the information and if it aligned with ACT principles. I thought the ACT overlords would come and judge my content and say that's not in line with our teachings. And then I sent it out to the public, shared it on Facebook and waited. Views, subscribers started trickling in and my worst fears vanished. No rejection, I wasn't incompetent, and I wasn't humiliated. My initial start date took months longer than if I would have just gotten on with it. My lack of willingness delayed a value-directed goal, and the demons on my boat nearly capsized me before I even started. Willingness is something we practice in small ways every day of our lives. For example, when we go to the movies, you're willing to pay for the ticket. It's not that you actively want to pay for it. If someone said, here's a free ticket, you wouldn't say, no thanks, I really prefer to pay my hard-earned money for that ticket. So it's not that you like paying for that ticket, it's more that you consent to pay for that ticket out of the interest of seeing the movie. Similarly, if you're going on vacation, you probably don't enjoy packing your suitcase. You don't desire it, but you go ahead and you do it in the interest of having a good trip. And if you've ever taken a driving test, you probably didn't want all the stress but you consented to it in the interest of getting your license. Willingness is essential because it's the only effective way to deal with life's obstacles. Whenever an obstacle presents itself, you can either say yes or no. If you say no, your life gets smaller. If you say yes, your life gets bigger. If you keep saying yes, there's no guarantee that life will get easier because the next obstacle may be just as difficult or even tougher. But saying yes becomes more of a habit and the experience you gain from saying yes gives you a reserve of strength. Even if you don't want to say yes, you can still choose to. And each time you make that choice, you grow as a person. This doesn't mean that you won't struggle after saying yes. It simply means you have a choice. Russ Harris explains this brilliantly as the struggle switch. I put a link to his video in the description below if you wanna check it out afterwards. But here's a little bit of a summary. Willingness has no shades of gray. Willingness is kind of an all or nothing experience, like being pregnant or not being pregnant, being alive or not being alive. You're either willing or you're not. The switch is either on or off. There's no in between. This all or nothing feature of willingness is expressed in the ancient proverb, you can't leap a chasm in two jumps. Nearly every week since August, I've uploaded a video every week to my YouTube channel. And while initially supportive, my family and friends went radio silent about a month into sharing on social media. Some families shared feedback with me that I talked over their heads. And I'm not sure which is least helpful, no feedback or feedback from the wrong sources. But all this led to questions. Am I on the right track? Is this connecting with anyone? Am I too intellectual for my viewers? Do people really want to learn this stuff? 
Each week I had to turn the switch off and make another video. I spent several hours crafting the script, recording and editing. Now there's a chance that I may get rejected because of things that I say on YouTube. Many know me as a pastor and hold stigmas about mental health. Others might reject me because of this. There's a chance that I may feel incompetent, especially talking about things I've recently learned or things that I'm still kind of working through or things that are complex. And I do have a bad habit of intellectualizing. And there's a chance that I may be humiliated. Maybe something that I say or do goes viral for the wrong reasons, like a preacher who couldn't pronounce pitching their tense and instead said pinching their you can fill in the blank. And he realized that during his sermon, and he said, oh, I hope they're not recording this, which the audience laughs and all who were viewing the video were laughing as well. And yeah, those are things that I think about when I'm editing. So why go through all this? Well, people that know me know that I value being authentic, genuine, a lifelong learner, spirituality, and being a service to others. So when I make a video, it brings me into contact with all of these values, and it gives me an opportunity to share myself with others in a genuine and authentic way. I also get another reason to read a book, learn something new, and be useful to others. So the question isn't why I go through all this, but why wouldn't I go through all this? Willingness isn't just to overcome obstacles, but to motivate you like you've never been motivated to do things you've never done before. So let's return to your goals for this year and where you are at this moment. We did a check-in at the beginning of the video, and now I'd like to take some action steps. First, what obstacle or fear are you confronting? Is it fusion with unhelpful thoughts? Is it unrealistic expectations? Is it avoidance of people, places, or things? Or is it remoteness from your values? Secondly, are you willing to take the next step toward a goal, toward your values, with intention. Now, if your answer is yes, then you have everything you need to get unstuck and get out of the trap of fear. Willingness is at the heart of acceptance. And if you can get this right, your journey towards a more purposeful and mindful life is only a click away.